So it's finally over. I won't have to listen to her nagging anymore. So and I'm gonna explain all that at the end of the video, obviously. This is a vlog, off-grid vlog, so I'm supposed to talk about off-grid things in a vlog. Do vloggy things. You may remember when we first got here, this place was really overgrown. The sun has been doing pretty good. Now we got here late in the day. We got here, what, 2.30, 3 o'clock. And the sun has been in pretty good shape. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on the sun so we can have our solar panels. But for now, uh, somewhere in this area, I'm gonna put the solar panels. I got them staged. So in two days, I'll get those set up. But again, everything has to be cleaned up. And I'm not entirely sure how to do it. For example, I was telling you about barbed wire. It's just everywhere. So you couldn't really bring a brush hog in here because uh, the barbed wire would get wrapped up in the brush hog. This is the wooded area here. And this is east. So the sun comes up from the east. This is south. So in the wintertime, the sun comes up from the southeast and, and sets in the southwest. But in the summertime, it comes straight up over my head and down like that. So you can see that we are surrounded by wooded area. We don't start to see any sun down here where the solar panels were until about 11 a.m. What made it worse is when we first got here, although it looks overgrown now, this was really overgrown back then. It had huge trees here and I had to clear all that out. It's grown up again, but not near as tall. So I can get sunlight now until about 6, 5, 6 p.m. currently. When we got here, I was pretty desperate on how to set up the solar panels. And I also have to keep the solar panels close to the battery bank. And the battery bank was in the camper and still is in the camper. When you're running DC electric, AC, DC, DC is low volts, high amps. AC is high volts, low amps. When you're trying to pump a lot of amps through a wire for long distances, the, the wire can get hot and burn up. So you try to keep your electric line for DC very short or very thick. Well, when we're talking thick, if you think about your battery cable, that's huge. It's a huge piece of wire, but it only has to run a couple feet. When we're running 30 or 40 amps through wire here over long distances, that wire is going to heat up really quick and burn up. So you got to keep the solar panels close to the battery bank. And then the batteries get converted or inverted actually into AC. So now you've got high volts, low amps. You can travel from the camper all the way up to the tiny house with a relatively piece of, small piece of wiring. That's why AC is so favorable. It was my understanding, could be wrong. It's more dangerous because you got higher voltage and voltage zaps you harder. That's why you can touch a 12 volt battery as long as you're not you know, standing in water. You can touch a positive and negative of a 12 volt battery and it won't shock you. But if you stick a nine volt battery on your tongue, it will give you a little zap. And the reason is, is because you got water. Whereas AC 120 volts will zap you just with your dry fingers. So it's more dangerous, but you have less fires. So I had to keep all that in mind. So we set the solar panels up right here, kind of in the midpoint of each of the trees. So really what was happening was, let's say we got, I don't know, 10 feet of solar panels here. Half the solar panels were getting charged at say 11 o'clock in the morning. And then by two o'clock, the other half was shaded. So it was a constant balancing act. And we, it was never perfect and it was never right, but it was the best we could do. Well, Carolyn wanted to grow a garden a couple years ago. So I spent the entire winter clearing this out. Now we have lots of sun on the west side. I never moved the solar panels because now they're kind of set up. Now, another thing is, is I had them sitting on the ground because they stay cooler. And I've tested this. I've got one of those little laser thermometers. You can test it. So I had them off the ground before. And people may remember I built a frame out of two by twos and we could pick it up, move it around. It was pretty nice. But when it was off the ground, the panels got hotter. Now I just did a YouTube poll. It's not really a poll. It's a question answer community tab. And I asked the question, do you lose efficiency 
when your solar panels heat up? And the answer is yes, it does. And it's something like the rooster, you hear the chickens making all that noise and it's very distracting, so I'm having a hard time concentrating. What it is, this new rooster, he gets scared every time I come down here and he stirs them all up. So I got to come over, hey, hey. And so the, then the, once the hens get stirred up, they think that there's trouble, so they're all making noise. So I think what it is on the solar panels, you lose a half a percentage of efficiency for every one degree Celsius rise in temperature above 78 degrees, up to 25% loss. So you figure every two degrees, I lose one amp of electricity. Now what happens is, is the voltage actually starts to drop on the solar panels, not the amperage. So you gotta have more voltage being pushed into your battery than what your battery already has in it. Your battery is considered depleted at 12.3 volts. So the solar panels start to charge, let's say at 12.4 volts. And then the solar panels would go all the way up to 20 volts. And then when the batteries finally get up to 14.4 volts, then the voltage starts to equalize from the solar panels. It's all done through the computer and the charge controller and all that. So your amps start to drop off and everything starts to equalize. So as it heats up, you start to lose that voltage so you're not able to pump as much into the batteries because you don't have enough spread between the battery and the solar panels. So when it's really hot at noontime or two o'clock, I lose efficiencies on the solar panels. But in the morning time, when the sun's coming up, the panels are still pretty cool. That's when I would like to get the most charging because I got the most voltage at that point. But I was just never able to do it because of this. Another minor issue I have is I got this power line. Everybody knows the power line is here. Since the power line is here, that means I have to keep an easement also, which causes me two problems. I was into the easement quite a bit, actually. So I'm standing right now where the end of the solar panels sat. And I'm sure you can see the cut, cut through the trees here. I'm standing right in the center of it. So the solar panels were in the easement. So what I did to compensate for that a little bit was I cut this down. So it left a, enough room. You can see that I kind of curved it in and I got it down here as far as I could so they could still get their trucks through here. But it always concerned me that if they needed to work on the power lines that my solar panels would be in the way. So I would have to move them. And these things weren't that easy to move, not after I took it off the frame. Because when I dropped it to the ground, I took it off the frame, I noticed the solar panels were cooler. I think what it is is the ground is just cooler. It was able to diffuse that heat from the solar panels a little bit. Not a lot, a couple few degrees, but that's quite a bit when you're talking about voltage and amps you're losing. The other thing is, is birds that sit up here on the power line and their droppings will drop right down to the solar panels. And you wouldn't think that's a big deal, but over a two or day, three day period, you haven't washed them or anything. And you're losing maybe an entire solar panel at some point. They do a lot of droppings. Another issue we've, we've had is this old camper. It's fallen apart. It's done its job. It took us around the country. We really enjoyed it. We lived here while we got the tiny house built. It is just falling apart. And Carolyn doesn't want it anymore. She wants it out of here. So there's just been a lot of issues. Well, yesterday, Carolyn said she wanted the solar panels moved. She's been building this shed here. She wants to move all the batteries and the charge controller out of the camper and into the shed. So she's been putting this together. She's told me to stay out of it. I said that in yesterday's video. And so I'll put a up next box at the end of this box where I talk about all that. And she's coming along pretty good. Of course, it won't stop raining. The grass just is growing <laughs> incredibly fast. And I just haven't had a chance to cut it because it's always wet. So yesterday, I moved the solar panels and I moved them up the hill, just a few feet. And I was really watching the sun yesterday because I knew I was gonna move them. And this spot stayed sunlit the entire day. So as the sun peaked up over the trees over here on the east, I think it was about 9.30. So big difference from 11 o'clock to 9.30. This stayed lit. Whereas normally over here, I, I would have to wait till 11. So let's say 9.30, 
this thing starts getting sunlight 70 75 degrees in the morning time i'm getting full charge into the batteries for about two hours before the panels get so hot that they start to lose efficiency so now i am going to get that two hour advantage i also get the evening sun this the panels will start to cool off towards the evening now the other advantage is, is since carolyn's son is here he wants to run the air conditioner about 11 o'clock. Well, that's about the same time the sun was starting to peek up over the trees here. So that means the solar panels hadn't had a chance to do any charging to the batteries. So he's starting up the air conditioner at the same time the batteries are starting to charge. So if he runs the air conditioner, say, to 3 o'clock, because he goes to work, that means from 3 to 5, I got to get the batteries charged with the solar panels. And it just wasn't possible. I was going to have to run the generator on sunny days without the clouds. On sunny days without clouds, I've noticed that I can run the air conditioner without running the generator. So the other option was, is, well, let's buy more solar panels. Well, that seems silly to me. He's only going to be here probably this one summer. And I didn't see the point in buying more solar panels just so we can run an air conditioner throughout one summer when all I really had to do was I just had to grab those two hours. So I moved them and th I'm glad I did. You know, they've been sitting here a long time and I got covered up in weeds and I ne never had a chance to put a tarp down. Anytime I moved them, things got messed up. So I just left them alone. I came down about twice a year. I did maintenance on the wires because they get dark. You know, the copper starts to turn color. And I've tried and tried everything. People in the comment section, main car mechanics have told me what to do. I've tried it all. Nothing keeps it from corroding. So I just come down and I clean them with a Scotch Bright Greenie about twice a year and then I rewire it. Well, when I moved it over here, I put a tarp down. Uh, obviously, you can see the tarp. Hopefully, that will keep some of the weeds out of here. I realize the tarp will rot, but hopefully, by that time, the ground will not be able to support grass life. That's my goal. But in the end, if the tarp does start to degrade, I can always replace it now because I, I'm not too concerned about the wires now. Before, every time I moved the wires, they'd be wrapped up in grass and weeds and I'd have to pull them and it'd get disconnected. The other thing is, is yesterday I was able to really take some care in doing this correctly. So I installed every solar panel upside down. I would wire it up, I'd turn it upside right, I'd go in, I'd read the charge controller to see if it was producing amperage. If it was, then I'd turn it back upside down. And so when I had them all wired up, every one of them was upside down. Then I did it again. I checked them all, I lift one up, check the amperage, lay it back down, up, down, up, down, the whole, all 10 of them. And what I found was, which was very interesting, is one of them must have had a loose connection, not a bad, not a, not a disconnected connection, just a loose connection. Because let's say all the other ones were producing, it was starting to get late in the evening, let's say, let's say they were producing one, two amps. The other one was producing a half amp. And I couldn't figure out why, so I took off the back panel on the solar panel, and I saw that it was, loose about the best way to put it so i just took that wire out and i've done that a to a lot of them just took the wire off of it the original wiring and rewired it myself these are rich solar panels and as far as that heat efficiency i was telling you about these are the best they stay more efficient than any other solar panel out there with hot temperatures the problem is is they're constructed very poorly the wiring is not very good so it comes with this wiring here sorry i got you on the lean here so i just rewire everything this one i haven't rewired but most of all of them have been rewired now and when this one goes bad i'll rewire it too now on the tarp it'll be easier to work on so if i have a problem i'll be able to trace these wires out much easier than i did when it was laying on the grass i'm pretty excited about this now there is one concern i have here i wish i had a white tarp for two reasons. One, the white ones over here that I have, they don't rot. But the second reason is, is 
that blue tarp is going to absorb heat and it's concerning me that it might overheat the solar panels we'll see I have to get rid of this as soon as she gets the shed built we'll start moving the batteries out of it and all that stuff but we have to get this out because in the winter time the Sun will be over there and the camper will block the sunlight from hitting the panels this one right now is the only one I think we're gonna have a problem with it should be up here but I just moved it back over here now she won't be nagging me all the time that she wants these solar panels move which I understood she wanted to move but I just didn't feel like there was a, a really good way to do it since the camper had to stay here that was the biggest problem was the camper is holding the batteries but now we have the shed I don't see any reason to keep them down there so if you'll click this up next box to take you to a video where I was talking about Carolyn building that shed so I hope I can inspire you <laughs> to do the maintenance you need so you can live your dreams thanks for watching